This is Dr. Tom Rosell. After 38 years of practice and almost a million patient visits, the Rosell Center for Healing knows what works and knows how you can take control of your health and wellness. My team of doctors practice 21st century integrative medicine. Whether you suffer from chronic pain and fatigue, allergies or headaches, we can help. Take charge of your health before it's too late. Make an appointment today. Call 703-698-7117 or visit online at rosellcare.com. Dr. Tom Rosell live right now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome to Dr. Tom Rosell live. This is Dr. Tom Rosell live in studio waiting to take your phone calls on any subject that you have in mind. Perhaps you've had a problem. You've tried, you've applied, you've done everything you can think of and you come up with the same old, same old, nothing that works. Well, here's your opportunity. That's why we're here. That's why we do this program every week to bring you the most intimate and updated information on integrative and natural therapeutics. What are we talking about? We're talking about you're taking responsibility for everything that happens to you. Call me, 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you. We have a topic today. We're going to talk to you about something that is actually the number one debilitating condition in this country, it puts more people out of work. It causes people to lose the capacity to enjoy their life. We're talking about over 55 million United States adults. What, what is it? It's arthritis, arthritic degenerative disease. And the problem is that there are many different types of arthritis. And unfortunately, when you have pain or you have a little soreness and so forth, your doctor often says, well, you have arthritis, and you have to live with it. Well, you don't have to live with it. And here in studio to help me talk about it intimately, your host this Wednesday evening at the Rizal Center for Healing, the 13th of the month, Dr. Leonard Poe. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're going to talk about something that, unfortunately, way too many people suffer from, and those are the ones that are reporting that they have a problem. But it's a, in many cases, it's neglect and lifestyle or a combination of those things over a period of many years. So let's start out. Let's kind of tiptoe into this thing. This Wednesday night, I know you're going to get very detailed, and you're going to help people understand that they actually do have control, and there's a lot that can be done to reverse the condition. But the most common form of arthritis is what most people think about is osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease affecting all the limbs, including the spinal column. How does that manifest? How does it begin to unfold? How do you determine and distinguish between pain and what really is arthritis? God, that's a loaded question. I figured keep it going for about an hour or so. Hey, give me two minutes. Okay. No. Um, so what we're talking about first off is osteoarthritis in it, which is the non-inflammatory form. And uh, that really comes down to bad Joint biomechanics, uh, poor, poor diet. A lot of factors go into that, but it comes down to the joints aren't moving the way they're supposed to move. They're not moving within the correct joint planes, and over time, they just start to shear at each other. They start to wear themselves down, and before you know it, they're degenerated, and uh, you've got osteoarthritis. So here we have a situation where we're talking about joint spaces that have lost their capacity to function normally. Correct. And we have, so we have muscles move bone. Right. And then, right? then you've got to get into the soft tissue support for it. Well, why have those things failed? Why are they no longer holding? And then you got to look at injury. you got to look at injury patterns, dietary patterns, all those other pieces that we talk about uh, that, you know, emotional stress, all the, that triad of health we always talk about, that goes into why did the joint fail in the first place. Well, structural chemical emotional. Let's talk about that physiological loop, if you will. Every muscle in the body we talk about has an organ system that it communicates with. So when we look at muscle function relative to strength or weakness, we're looking at that communication from the inside of the body to the outside of the body as it relates to different systems, systems being the nervous system. You have 31 pairs of nerves that come off the spine, communicating both with the organ and the muscle, so you have that loop. We know we have energetic loops. We know we have blood supply loops. We know we have lymph drainage right. and so forth. So here's the deal, and here's my question. If we have an organ system that is failing, is going to cause, we know, and failing is a really bad word, not working the way it's supposed to, functionally not doing what it's supposed to be doing. You have... It's, it's a, got a D instead of an A. That's right. So structural, chemical, emotional. Right. Okay. 
rub and, rub and wear and tear, joints break down, doctor goes in, arthritis. So talk about the mechanics of this. How does it happen subtly over time? Trauma, chemistry, stress. How does it Wait, say, how, how, how does, does it, it happen? How does it happen over time? How does, okay, because it doesn't how, happen. How, 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 with osteo, I wouldn't say it happens suddenly. That's a lot of, you know, for the most part, unknown neglect over time. You know, people aren't trying to get osteoarthritis, but, you know, it's a lot of times a sudden onset, but it's been there for years. And, yeah, it's all those biofeedback patterns. Uh, you got to look at the whole picture as to you know why that area is not doing as well as it should. And yeah, you got to look at the organ systems. You got to look at you know all those different patterns. Patient comes in to you, Doctor Poe, and they tell you that, and you can see it for them. You know when they're sitting in their chair, they say it's difficult getting from a sitting to a standing position. It's just stiff. They move around. They they feel a little looser and so forth. Is that arthritis or is that something else? Oh, probably something. I would think probably something else. Okay, so if the arthritic does. Does motion help it? Yes. Okay. Does motion help it in every circumstance? No. Okay. So here's that's why I'm fishing. So we have this degenerative garbage that is diagnosed as arthritis, and x-rays show up. And here's the problem, is that you can see a set of x-rays that have changes in the joint space, whether it's the spine or wrist or elbow or shoulder, and there may not be any pain whatsoever. Patient, no. patient yeah. functions totally normally. Yeah. And then there are some that have very minimal changes, and the patient is in tremendous pain. So I guess the fishing hook I'm putting out there for you is simply this. The presence of degenerative disease or arthritis does not necessarily equal pain and dysfunction. No. Why? Because it, it, well, it doesn't do that with anything, though. That's true. But if, when you're dealing with the patient that's in front of you, why is that so? I mean, you have – why is the limitation there with some patients who have minimal changes? And limitation is not anywhere near significant. It's somebody who has – you know, you, you see almost almost bone on bone, but they're, they seem to be functionally able where the other person isn't. Because it's not – it's – with anything, we're talking about arthritis today, but with anything, because this is an applicable answer anywhere, it's never any one single thing. There's a there's a lot of different pieces that go into making up whatever that health problem might be. So, you know, th even though the joint space may visually look compromised, um, and, you know, you see this all the time with x-rays or MRIs or anything else, you know, it, it may look absolutely horrible. And there's no pain or symptomatology at all. It may look very minimal, but there's a lot of pain and symptomatology. And it depends on, you know, all those other factors, the soft tissue, you know, the health of the, the joint area, uh, the inflammatory patterns of the person. So it's all those. Eventually, it will. I mean, if you're if you're if you've got a lot of destruction there, it's going to catch up with you eventually. Well, of course, if the but, bone, bone fuses, you can't move. But you got to look at in osteoarthritis isn't like anything else to deal with. You got to look at the whole person. You got to look at all the different factors that go into it, and you know. It's it's a person. It's not a, a joint. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. That's triple eight six three zero nine six two five. Love to talk to you on any subject you have in mind. We're talking about arthritis affecting over ten percent of the adult population. Interesting statistic is that of all the people who are diagnosed with some form of arthritis, three fifths of them are under the age of sixty five. And you would think that this is an older person joint, which or, or joint problem, which your physician wants you to think it is. Yeah. But it's not. No, it's not. It has nothing to do with linear age. It's just it's abuse over time. If we're talking about osteoarthritis. Well, any arthritis, yeah. so to speak, whether rheumatoid or psoriatic or gout and so forth. We're going to get into touch bases on that a little bit today as well. But osteodegenerative disease and rheumatoid arthritis or juvenile arth uh, juvenile arthritis or, you know, all the things we measure. Matter of fact, if you look at a, a copy of Dorland's Medical Dictionary and you looked up the term arthritis, you would see pages yeah. of different types of arthritis from inflammatory to infectious to degenerative. And Septic, there's, yeah. Also, and, I mean, there's all sorts of, of arthritic, pat arthritic patterns you can have. And, and patients come in and unfortunately sometimes I get a little quip and when they say, well, you know, I have arthritis. I've been told I it's have It's just a little arthritis. It's a little arthritis. <laughs> and, I, and I look and I say, well, what kind? Yeah. Which one? Which one's your favorite? So this Wednesday evening, Dr. Leonard Poe will be your host, your presenter at the Brazil Center for Healing, the 13th of May, and he's going to be talking about this subject, arthritis in its many forms, but more importantly, what you can do about it. Join him. Join us. Come, come by and listen. You'll go away with the ability to 
realize that you can take control of this. All you have to do is call our office at 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. I want to remind you that all of our classes at the Rizal Center for Healing are open to the public. They're free of charge. Absolutely cost you nada. Just to call in and say, hey, I'm coming, and then we confirm that make sure that you're going to be there so we can prepare for you. These are our way of giving back to society to make sure that you have all the tools that you need to change your life. 703-698-7117. If you'd like to reach us when we're not on the air, all you have to do is go to our website, go to rosellecare.com. That's R-O-S-E-L-L-E-C-A-R-E.com, and click in, and guess what? You'll get a return call, you'll get a return message from one of my, my doctors. They are very able to answer most everything that you can ask about. Let's get into this problematic situation, Dr. Paul, a little bit more. The, the problem that we're talking about is one that is extremely far-reaching, as we said. We're talking about the number one cause of uh, disability in this country, and unfortunately, way too many people are taking tons and tons and tons of medications from what we call NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, uh, to even tranquilizers in some situ- uh, situations. They are devastating. They're topical pain relievers and so forth, which really don't do anything. Steroidal uh, uh, injections. And it goes on. You and I were talking about uh, an article that I read on uh, this morning. It was, you know, doing things that are unnecessary that have minimal or uh, no impact whatsoever relative to the condition. And that's this is one of those conditions. That's one of these situations that so much treatment is directed towards nothing, in my opinion, meaning that... It's management. It's not... It's management. Not, yeah, it, it controls nothing. So talk about... You know, let's talk about the NSAIDs. Uh, people are on these vicious medications uh, years ago, Celebrex and, and so forth. What do they do? Why, why is it not only unfortunate they're on it, but it's not only not effective, but it can cause uh, significant problems? Yeah, with a lot of these, you're, you're going to be... Because we're looking at it from we're going to treat a symptomatology standpoint, which is I, I have some pain, and so I'm going to take, you know, you know, aspirin or you know, whatever for it instead of, well, first of all, why do I have it? What what kind of pain is it? Where is it coming from? Is it an inflammatory arthritis, a non-inflammatory arthritis? Because if you have something like psoriatic arthritis, uh, which is which will typically cause bowel problems, and you start taking a bunch of aspirin for it, and you increase the amount of bleeding that is going on in the bowels, it's, you're going to make the problem worse in the long run. You might not feel as much pain initially, but you make the problem worse. And that's why it's so important to figure out well, if I have joint pain, why do I have joint pain? Where is it coming from? You know, there's if you there's a thousand different reasons why you can have joint pain. But if you're just treating the pain and not getting into the well, the why behind it, why is it there in the first place? You know, you'll never get it. You'll be taking that crap forever. You know, the the thing that's really got me by the short hairs recently is the fact that many physicians are prescribing antidepressants for arthritic conditions and in an effort to block the pain. Doing yeah. nothing about the condition, right. patient still rusts up and gets hard, but, you know, Abilify no. and Adipin and yeah, Anaphro and so just trying to increase the amount of serotonin being bounced back to block something called substance P, which is one of your pain mediators. It's still, it's the same thing. It's get to why you have the pain in the first place and look to start correcting that. But the problem continues. Uh, yeah. Until yeah. you fix it. Until you fix it. And then, you know, physician says, well, you know, you're too old. There's nothing we can do for you. What do you expect for your age? And it continues to go into degenerative uh, destruction, and you can't move. And then as it's timeline, it's not age-related. It has nothing to do with how old you are. It's neglect over time. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Leonard Poe will be your host, your presenter. You really need to come in and see what you can do about it because, trust me, it can be reversed in many situations. It can be modified in many more, and it can be helped in so many others. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You're listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. Indeed, I'm in studio. 888-630-9625. That's 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on any subject to have in your mind. We're talking about arthritis and degenerative disease, number one cause of disability in this country, affecting somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 million people, adults, and others. And by the way, three-fifths of you are not 
65 or older, you're under 65 years of age, and not a good thing. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Leonard Poe will be your host, your presenter at the Roselle Center for Healing. He's going to be talking about this subject. So if you're on medications, if you constantly are going into a place of more degenerative changes and gradual inability and instabilities, uh, this is a class that you really don't want to miss because it can be turned around. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. After years of sports and martial arts and accidents and so forth, you don't want to see what my spine looks like, but I still can function at a level that I want to function. You can make a difference. Before we get on, we're going to go to the phones. Bernice, my dear friend from Arizona, how can I help you? Good morning, by good, the way. Good morning um, to you. It's afternoon to here. You know, uh, what vitamins could a, my cousin that's on dialysis, he's about 60 or 59, and he's on dialysis, has been for about 15 years or so. I want to know what vitamins he can do, um, like fish oil or any vitamins. Is there a B complex out there that's great for him, and what vitamins should he stay away from? Well, the biggest problem with dialysis is that it's going to remove a lot of different things from the body as the, the blood gets filtered instead of the kidney doing it. It's, there's going to be deficiencies. Uh, you start out with a very good, natural, vegetarian form of a multiple vitamin. Now, depending on what his health is and other things that are going on, but it has to be a, a vegan form, vegetarian form, uh, and you want to keep his animal proteins very, very low. Uh, I would put him on a an amino acid, a, fr- a branch chain amino acid, one that does not have to be broken down because that will help supply proteins in the body and begin to help uh, uh, reparative uh, processes. Uh, Anybody who has a kidney problem will fare very well with uh, acupuncture and low-energy light laser. It makes a big difference. But dietary patterns, along with those two things, starting out with uh, a multiple vitamin, again, a a vegetarian form, uh, will begin the process of helping him. I'd have to know a lot more about him, Bernice, uh, you know, to be specific. Uh So, But start with that. But, again, in your area in Arizona, You've got some really top shelf people and some, you know, I would get them under acupuncture. I would find somebody who uses laser. I would find somebody who knows their dietary patterns. If you'd like me to be specific, send me a note, Bernice, and I'll get back to you and I'll tell you, tell you what you can get done. Okay. Uh, okay. If you can have to keep his proteins low, um, what kind of protein could he do? Well, it's going to, they're going to have to be vegetable proteins at this point because okay. y- you want to keep, you know, uh, high levels of uric acid, uh, out of the out of the scene on this, the the damage can be done because of too much protein, and but lots of vegetables, a lot of anything that looks green. You want to stay away from oxalates, things that will form uh, stones and crystallizations. Uh, spinaches are going to one of the things that you're going to want to avoid. Uh, but there's a host of many other things that are appropriate. Anyway, Bernice, thanks a lot. Appreciate your phone call. Triple eight six three zero nine six two five. We're talking about. Arthritis, And this Wednesday evening, Dr. Poe will be your presenter, your host at the Roselle Center for Healing, talking about this specific subject and, you know, what uh, you can do about it and what the problem is. You know, uh, I'm going to cut you off. Go ahead. You know, Good. I'm glad you, you were, did. You were, ta- <laughs> you were talking earlier. We've been talking about age, okay, but one of the things that, uh, you know, we're, we're starting to see uh, is arthritis and joint problems in juveniles. Um, a lot of kids these days. And you look at it, and you look at the amount of sports activity that these kids are involved in. Um, I mean, they're they're playing as much as a, a pro athlete would these days. And so even in, in children, you have to start thinking about some of those things and start supporting the joint structure and the muscles in those kids at a very early age so that by the time they're 15, um, you know, they're not looking to have to have joint surgery and everything else because they're so burned out. You look at these swimmers that are, you know, these 10-year-old swimmers that are competitive, um, you know, they have pitch counts in Little League Baseball now to, you know, ease back on, you know, how much pressure is being put on the shoulder and the elbow and everything else. Yeah, and you, ha- and you have two studs in your family that you have to, to worry about, you know, two little tanks that are amazing. You know, my grandsons are, I gave it away, yeah, you're my son-in-law. I'm not supposed to do that on the air. Anyway, but these guys are, are incredible. But here's, here's the thing, is that we're not talking about juvenile rheumatoid. We're talking about osteodegenerative Ooh. conditions. No, osteo, yeah, in, in these kids. You know, they get to high school and they can't play anymore because the joints are already getting destroyed. Yeah, you, know, you get an injury, you get banged up, you get repetitive stress injuries, uh, superimposed. And here's my opinion on this. And fortunately, our kids are very protected by this. 
a child who's eating sugar sodas, coffee, black teas, fast food, fried foods, alcohol, gluten additives, and preservatives, and all those things today, unfortunately, are relative to kids. All of them, every one of them. Yes, even yeah. the alcohol sometimes. And so it causes inflammation. That inflammation is, is acid. Acid destroys the joint spaces. And now you have a kid who has... Yeah. Early onset degenerative disease. Because yeah, pizza and french fries are vegetables. That's right. Yeah. Coming up to a break, we'll be right back after some very important messages. Did you know that routine mammograms can increase radiation exposure to breast tissue 1,000 times over a chest x ray? Now consider a simple, non invasive, and totally safe medical procedure approved by the FDA since 1982 that can detect breast cancer five to eight years before it can be visualized on a mammogram. Infrared thermographic imaging can accurately detect the initial signs of breast cancer as increased blood supply and metabolic rate, which is recorded as heat. Why expose yourself to radiation when accurate and safe medical detection is available? Call the Thermography Center of Fairfax to schedule a breast exam today at 703-948-7248. That's 703-943-7248. For more information, visit www.thermographyscan.net. That's thermographyscan.net for the Thermography Center of Fairfax. The Roselle Center for Healing is a proud supporter of breast cancer awareness and reminds you to conduct a monthly breast self-examination and a thermographic breast scan as part of your annual wellness checkup. Dr. Tom Roselle Live continues now on 105.9 FM and AM 630 WMAL. Welcome back, everybody. This is Dr. Tom Roselle. You're listening to Dr. Tom Roselle Live. We indeed in studio. Call me, 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. Love to talk to you on any subject that you have floating around in your head problems that arise that you don't know what to do with. That's why we're here. That's why we do this program. We're talking about arthritic conditions, which is the topic of our program in office this Wednesday evening. Those of you who have been know that we do our in-house continuing education programs for you to give you the ability to help yourself. That's why this program, our lecture series, all the things that we do are there for you. And by the way, don't forget, October the 17th, Ageless Health 2015 Get on the website, go to agelesshealth2015.com, and register now because you have early bird specials that are able for you to be uh, taken advantage of, okay? So do that. But we're talking about arthritic conditions. Oh, by the way, before I forget, I'd like you to uh, check out a new website. It's called drtomrosell.com. You can go from it that way, or you can go drtomrosellive.com. Either way, it'll get you there, and you can hook into everything else that we have going up. But you'll hear the, uh, the radio programs. They're posted there for you. This one will be there as well to re-listen to. So Dr. Tom Rosell Live or drtomrosell.com. Either one will get you to the same place. Let's, uh, let's kind of move away just a little bit from the osseous degenerative diseases of uh, arthritis into the immune, autoimmune conditions of rheumatoid and gouty arthritis and juvenile arthritis and so forth, because so many people suffer from that, and they're put on immuno, uh, immunological suppressant drugs that have far-reaching, devastating conditions and problems that they produce. So, Dr. Poe, let's let's talk about that specifically. And by the way, I for, I, I'm you know I've, in my brain twice it's gone through my head and I've neglected and I. Need I to, hope it's what I think you're going to do. Yes, yes. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Yeah, I was about to because I was going to have to railroad you here in a minute. I know. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are out there that allow us to be who we are as a population and as yes. a as a as a race. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. And my beautiful wife. Indeed, because you will suffer. Because that's don't. a job right there with those boys. Wow, you have no idea. Indeed. Anyway, let's talk about rheumatoid. Your platform, my friend. What distinguish it for me between rheumatoid and osteoarthritis? Well, I, and I think that's, you know, not even. I don't even really want to talk about treatment for any for any of these things right now. Anyway, because I think the most important thing in that I see with most patients when they come in is just first distinguishing what kind of arthritis it is. You know, is it good old-fashioned trauma-induced osteoarthritis, uh, or is it this inflammatory form of arthritis, which can be rheumatoid arthritis? You know, we have gout, we have psoriatic arthritis, Sjogren's. I mean, there's a ton of autoimmune diseases that can contribute to this, or infectious diseases, you know, things we see. I mean, how many patients do you see now that have Lyme disease? I mean, it's, it's tremendous. It's ridiculous. Tons. Um, and, and all these things are immune-regulated problems in the joint space. And so... 
the first most important thing is, you know, if you've got arthritis and you've got some other symptomatology going along with it is to start trying to distinguish is that what it is and then you've got to look at immune factors you have to do things like and this is this is not difficult and that's the thing that i think most patients are surprised about is how easy it is to look for these things and see if any of those patterns are there we're talking about a lot of simple blood work most of the time there's there's a lining of the joint space called a synovial capsule or a synovial membrane that when you have this type of arthritic condition or any of the autoimmune arthritic problems that's what's affected. And it's your immune system has turned against you. That's right. As attacking some of the structures in your body. And, you know, generally we're talking about uh, lymphoid tissue, the lymphatic system. We're talking about intestinal tract. We're talking about thymus gland. We're talking about the spleen. Those are part of the overall immunological reactions. But also we're talking about the initial line of defense called the fight-flight system, the adrenal glands. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we can begin to stack them as IgA antibodies, IgG, IgE, IgM, and they all do different things. They all mean different things. But here's what we have is we have an inflammatory reaction that's due to the body being insulted, broken down over a period of time. And it has to do because of environmental uh, stimuluses in so many, con- uh, so many different ways. And now we have a person that is suffering. We're talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of about one and a half to two million people that are just suffering from there's rheumatoid. A lot. Yeah, there's a lot. There's there's more than what people think. I mean, and that's the thing. We see so many autoimmune diseases today. It's ridiculous. What's what's the pattern? Is if you had to say there's people out there that are more predisposed than others, and you know we're just talking about rheumatoid, but we have juvenile rheumatoid, we have gout, and we have all those things. What's the profile? Of somebody that might be suspected that there's a, a greater possibility, greater risk, potential of them having a problem. Well, be more specific. Are you talking from a, a laboratory point of view no, or no, just no, a lifestyle. general history uh, no, point I'm of talking view? No, I'm lifestyle. A lifestyle point of view. Well, I mean, a lot of it, you know, a lot of it is, you know, what your diet looks like, what you've been eating, but, you know, that's the whole history. You know, where have you lived? What things have you, you know, do you have a history of, you know, uh, Epstein-Barr virus? You know, how many flare-ups have you had of that? Uh, vaccinations, you know, which nobody wants to talk about anymore. You know, lots of different things go into the making up that profile, but that's, you know, that takes like five minutes of talking to somebody to see, oh, God, you got this, this kind of wild immune regulation history going on here. You know, you're sick all the time or you have allergies all the time. You know, all those things start to factor in. You, you can, you can kind of lay it out pretty quick. You know, I've got constant gut problems, digestive problems. You know, I've got a family history of thyroid problems. I mean, that's usually a big, you know, because that's probably Hashimoto's if you've got a family history of thyroid problems. It's a pass on. Yeah. I mean, so, anyway. yeah, so, I mean, you can see it. And the thing to remember with that is it's not, you know, when we know this from genetics, it's not whether or not you have the gene. You and I have the genes. Everybody's got the genes for all sorts of really, really bad stuff. It's whether or not it gets expressed. And, and, that's, and, and that's, that's the, the thing. Yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that's epigenetics. Yeah. That's the, the environmental, that's the emotion, that's the injuries, the traumas, our patterns, the things we do with things that we don't do. Unfortunately, we ignore that. We think that it just happens to us. And now with the advent of GMOs, genetically yeah. modified foods, we're in real trouble because, as you were just saying, those gene expressions don't have to be expressed, but because we're getting things that are altering the foods that we eat, now they get into our genetic right. makeup and they stimulate what we call junk DNA, and now you've got all these problems that are coming about. Right. Heavy metal exposure. I mean, when you talk to you know, anybody in your generation or older, I mean, you you always hear about. I've never met one that didn't play with mercury in school oh, at some point. In time. All the, you know, t- all mean, the time, yeah. you played it on the desk. It was you fun. Know, lead paint, lead gasoline. I, there's there's so many ways, and you know we don't even know what we're getting today. But you know you get exposed to all those things. That's why you see this increase in neurodegenerative diseases. Degeneration is a result of multitudinous types of irritations and situations. Lots of things. Unfortunately, we don't look at it that way. You know, going back to unnecessary applications of medicine, things that we do just because we should do them according to this is the standard of care. But what standard of care, including, in my opinion, inoculations and vaccines and so forth, the body's been exposed to so many different things, living in certain areas, so many different conditions. And now you have a body that no longer can handle the insult. The onset is almost imminent. Right. Let's, let's go to the uh, let's go to the phones. Sibin, how can we help you? Thank you for calling. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hello. Um, I have a lot of pain in my right knee, and um, it just cracks. It's also 
All right, I can hardly bend down. I love to do gardening. I'm just restricted up and down the steps every which way. And I recently read about surgery uh, being minimally invasive is what they described it as. Uh, I wonder if you could tell me about that. When I go to my doctor, the only thing he wants to do is give me cortisone shots, go back the next day, the next time, you know, but I don't want the cortisone shots and I've refused them. So then, first of all, the cortisone is going to make it worse. When you have, when, yeah, when, ha- when you have degeneration in a joint space, that's the cracking and the stuff that you're hearing, the restriction. If you're bone on bone, meaning there's no disc uh, space uh, available at all. The meniscus is totally destroyed. You may not have any other option other than surgery and to have either a partial or a full replacement of, of the knee. Now, having said that, there are many other things that can be useful before that, but you have to look at the chemistry. You have to look and see if there's an inflammatory reaction that's going on. You have to look at uh, the, the muscle strength around it. Your knee is controlled by many different muscles. You have your big thigh muscle, which is your quadricep muscle, four different muscles. You have muscle on the side, the iliotibial band, one inside called the gracilis. You have one that comes across the top called the sartorius. Then you have your hamstrings in the back, and you have stuff behind your knee. Now, if these muscles aren't firing the way they're supposed to, your knee is going to be predisposed to a worsening condition over time. So you have to fix muscle function, structural integrity first, and then, you, uh, in addition to it, not then, in addition to it, you've got to fix the internal chemistry. Your body is being destroyed by the medications that you're taking, and you have no hope of resolution as long as you're, you're doing it. I'm not on any medication. You take nothing at all? Well, I do for edema in my leg. Mm-hmm. What, t- what, do you take? what are you taking? For, what is it called, fluorescent mite, I think. Oh, you, that sounds more like a blood pressure medication. Well, it's it's for edema. Okay. Well, a lot of blood pressure medication is used to decrease swelling, which drops the blood oh. pressure. Diuretics as well, things like uh, HCTZ, and there's combinations of things that do that. But nevertheless, uh, just as a mantra, if you if you're a coffee drinker, if you have a lot of sweets in your diet, if you if you do a lot of carbohydrates, your inflammation. I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. <laughs> Good girl. I'm proud of you. Good for you. Uh huh. How much water do you drink? How much what? How much water do you drink? Oh, maybe about eight glasses. I'm more of a milk drinker. I love milk, almond milk. You just made Dr. Poe cringe. He's sitting there going, oh, no. That's unfortunately because of the steroids that they put into the cows in the pasteurization process. It dramatically increases your, your joint space inflammation. So there's things that can that that you can get done. There are enzymes. There are uh, branch chain uh, amino acids that will begin to help repair it. But again, I can't tell you. Acupuncture will will help. Manipulative modes will help. All of those things can be make a difference. Uh, but dairy has got to go. Sugar's got to go. Carbohydrates have got to go. You got to eat tons and tons of vegetables a day. And you have to, I mean, if you're going to take natural anti-inflammatories, you think you would take things like curcumin or boswellia. Uh, you would take high levels of omega fatty acids, and I'm talking in the neighborhood of 10,000 units a day, but they have to be balanced with omega-3, 6, and 9s in the right proportions, the right ratios. Um, if you're not allergic to shellfish, then you can take glucosamines. Unfortunately, if you're re- if you're allergic to shellfish and you take glucosamines, I'm glucosamine, not allergic to it. Then you can take the glucosamines, glucos- glucosamine sulfate is the one that actually repairs the joint space. If you take any aspirin, unfortunately, it will fight the glucosamine. Yeah, and I'm not taking any aspirin either. Good. You are an amazing woman. So I that, mean, it's just my own feeling. I try to be my own doctor. Well, so far, you're doing better than most physicians would. Listen, you can be helped, Sibin. Uh, more than happy to be real specific with you. Why don't you join us this Wednesday evening? I'd love to have you as our guest at uh, Roselle Center. You're in Chevy Chase, so you're not that far away. Give us a call, and uh, you know, Dr. Poe will be more than happy to get into it intimately with you. That's, not, that's a good garden variety kind of kind of case. It is. You know, it's, with, with it being one knee, it's probably more osteo than, than an, an inflammatory type arthritis, I would say. And that's one where I, I think you put it pretty well. You know, if, if 
the joint space is completely destroyed, you know, if there's a ton of debris in there, there might be some surgical intervention, but you still have to go back and look, well, what were the biomechanics that got you like this in the first place and still go back and correct all those things. So you're going to end up with the same problem all over again. Yeah, the, That's it, why people get their knee scope like six times. Yeah, and it, just, it doesn't do anything because the joint's no. still in balance. Yeah, you still and have to fix it. You still have to fix the, the mechanism of the joint. You still have to make sure that it's working properly. But, you know, Sibin's impressive because, you know, I can tell by her voice quality that she's a little older. I'm not going to, you know, uh, venture to guess, but the point of it is, is she's doing that much for herself already. Uh, she's the type of patient yeah. that can get great responses because Those she's willing you can tweak. Yeah, you got to tweak a few things. That's right. Yeah. So, if, uh, Sibin, if you're not bone on bone, then there's a lot more that can be done before you let anybody do anything to you. But the only way to know that is to be able to see it. And it's and probably not bone on bone because they would have just said surgery right off the bat. I would think well, sometimes. I mean, the the fact that they're Depends. sticking they're Depends. sticking Depends. with steroids already tells me that they're you know yeah, yeah they're not as as great then as. Then you get they, stuck in pain management be. and you, you disappear forever. That's right. And, you know, they say, well, what do you expect for your age, right? Yeah. 888-630-9625. 888-630-9625. We're talking about degenerative osteoarthritis this Wednesday evening. Dr. Leonard Poe will be your host, your presenter at the Rizal Center for Healing. We'd love to have you as our guest. All you need to do is call us at 703-698-7117. 703-698-7117. And tell my staff that you'd like to be there. This is for you. We do these all for you. That's the only reason that uh, we do the program. That's the only reason that, you know, that we publish and we talk about and we try to assist and help you in any way we possibly can. Dr. Poe. Yeah. Yeah. This Wednesday evening, you only got, you, you, this one's going to be easy because you only got 30 seconds before we have to take a break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the incidence of gaudy arthritis relative to, you know, uh, its manifestation in the in the body is it five percent, ten percent of arthritic conditions, twenty percent? I don't know. I'm not Google. Well, I, I, mean, I don't see it that. I would say I don't see it that often, but I, I am. Uh, I yeah. mean, you see it every once in a while. It's you know either gout or pseudo gout. That's true. Which is important uh, because it's not always just the big toe. Yeah, no, you have to distinguish it. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Actually and you got to check that when it's flared. That's the other big thing. Yeah. If you're perfectly fine right now, you have no pain, you get your uric acid measured, it's, but, that's not a good time. But predisposition is there. We'll be right seconds, back. After, seconds, we'll be right back. Bye. Are you dental phobic? Do you neglect your dental health because of fear and anxiety? A beautiful smile begins with exceptional dental care. And you can trust in the expertise of Soft Touch Dental Care and Dr. Michael Chung. Soft Touch Dental Care is unlike any dentist office you'll ever experience. Their warm and welcoming environment is designed to soothe fears and anxiety the moment you arrive, and they're especially pleased to pamper their honored guest patients. Dr. Michael Chung is a professional and leading expert in all areas of comprehensive dentistry, including cosmetic, sedation, neuromuscular, TMJ, and implant dentistry. Offering state-of-the-art technology, Dr. Chung can give you the smile of your dreams. Arrange for a complimentary consultation today with Dr. Michael Chung and experience the expertise that makes Dr. Michael Chung so unique. Call 703-319-6990. That's 703-319-6990. Or visit bestinsmile.com. That's bestinsmile.com. Welcome back. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. You've been listening to Dr. Tom Rosell live. We've been in studio, 888-630-9625. That's how you find us here. How you find us when we're not here is you go to 703-698-7117. That's 703-698-7117. That's the number as well that you registered for Dr. Poe's presentation on arthritis this Wednesday evening, the 13th of the month. And again, we want to wish all of the wonderful ladies out there a very happy Mother's Day. We have to make sure that we honor our mothers and the ladies in our lives that have made all of this possible. It's called humanity and the human race, and we won't talk about what came first, the chicken or the egg. Anyway, Adam, we'll ta- Adam uh, you know, you're in trouble when you get home today. You're going to be in real trouble. So it's usually are. Gout. Let's go back to gout. Six million. Very good. Excellent. Over the lifetime of people, 6 million people. Actually, on an incidence level, 3 million people annually will have manifestations of gout. And as you said earlier, the only time that you really know is when you flare up and the titers are there. Because we're talking about uric acid. Uric acid are like these little glass shards that get into the body and they rip the joint spaces Mm -hmm. and destroy it. And painful, they can cause uh, 
blood, uh, bl- bleeding that can cause all kinds of incredibly painful. Ir- oh, pain is awful. Usually, it's King's hit, disease. Usually hits the big toe because because it's because it's really it's dietary mediated. Yeah, it's mostly dietary it's, it's mediated. Crappy it, rich foods that yeah. are not good for you. Alcohol, coffee. You can do a tremendous a lot for for gout if you have it. The medications are horrible, by the way, because they stop DNA synthesis. I mean, they're really, really bad medications for you. And one of the side effects is gout. Black cherry juice. Yeah. There's tons of stuff you can do dietarily to, to keep it from flaring up ever again. And, if, you know, you have to change your diet. You have yeah. to be willing to make a difference. If you don't, you've got the problem. Most gout patients are, though, because that's – it's awfully Some painful. Some people are really stubborn. Yeah, you, but I, didn't, know, they, I they, didn't say all. They, I said they'd most. Rather, they'd rather take Colchicine, which is the, the primary medication for it, and say, well, you know, it's okay if I yeah, take my medication. Yeah, you know, that doesn't fine. work. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work because it continues the process. When it goes to the big toe, the really reason it's there, it's because, you know, that's where liver one meridian yeah. starts and it gets congested. This Wednesday evening, 703-698-7117. That's how you call now and register for Dr. Post's presentation. And I promise you it'll be very straightforward and you're going to go home with a ton of information to help you. Sally, thank you for calling. Boy, I appreciate uh, being able to be on. I know you have a short period of time. You've helped a lot in the past. I'm calling. Can you recommend someone in actually Anchorage, Alaska, who can see a doctor for depression, a, a, a someone in the mid-20s has just been diagnosed with depression? I thought it had been coming on for maybe a year or so. You know, so. If I, Sally, if I lived in Alaska, I'd be depressed, too, with the lack of sunlight and the cold and so forth. The only time that's worth living in Alaska in the spring. But I'm kidding you, but besides that, Send me a note, Sally, because I'm not going to be able to do it from, from the studio. So go to our website, go to rosellecare.com, and I will look in our referral directory, and I'll see if there's somebody there that does what we do. Happy to do that for you. Not a problem whatsoever. Do we have one more time? I'm going to try. Diane. Quick, quick. yeah. Diane. Hello. Hi. This has got to be quick, hon. I've got less than a minute. Okay. Well, I have Sjogren's, and I was diagnosed back in the 60s. I'm 77. Uh, so I had to learn how to get fixed because I was sick all the time with infections. And uh, I did get some arthritis in the late 90s, and I had read the arthritis cure, so I tried some glucosamine and chondroitin, and it actually worked. Okay. I thought it was all osteo. Quick question. i got 30 seconds. Okay. What else can I do? It uh, seems to be under control. Sh- sh- the best thing. Sh- huh? Sjogren's, sh- it is. Sjogren's is an adrenal function problem to start with, an autoimmune condition that be, can uh, definitely be supported. You have to upregulate adrenal function. you got to make sure the intestinal tract and the liver are working really well. Same type of loop that we're talking with any autoimmune reaction, but if you do that, life can get a whole lot better. If I can help you, let me know. This Wednesday evening, Dr. Poe's your host. We're coming up to the end of the program. Wish it was another three hours long so we could help all of you. See you next week. This is Dr. Tom Rosell. Bye. This is Dr. Tom Rosell, author of Ageless Health. Health is a do-it-yourself program. My book, now also available in audio version, is a step-by-step program of how to take control of your health and wellness without drugs or needless surgery. You have the capacity to change your health and level of well-being. Take control of your health today and order Health Is a Do-It-Yourself Program. For more information and to order, please visit agelesshealthbook.com. That's agelesshealthbook.com.